Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Where are Planet X and Nibiru? Now, recently someone asked me for Planet X's and Nibiru's positional and tracking data. I replied that Planet X's positional and tracking data is as follows the Sun's inner and outer corona. I would think that this was obvious from the many images I have shown of the objects in the Sun's corona. However, some people are still under the impression that Planet X and the Bureau are one and the same object and that it is a single planet or star. This is incorrect. What we have in the solar system is not a single planet or star. We have a huge system of objects. Some people are also under the impression that Planet X is still coming. This is also incorrect. The system, which I call the Planet X system of stellar cores, has been here for nearly 200 years. And you may look at Article 146 entitled Planet X System, Time of Arrival, and Article 331 entitled Planet X and the Total Solar Eclipse of 1860. At least that is when they are they started arriving at the sun's corona, but they have continued to arrive, and they are therefore now a huge number of these objects in the sun's corona. And you may look at Article 333 entitled, Huge Numbers of Planet X System Objects in Coronagraph Images. And here we see one of these objects, a stellar core, or it's a brown dwarf. This is an old star, and a dead star, and well, almost dead. A brown dwarf is not as dead as a black dwarf. It may still emit a little bit of light, but these are old stars. And they are striped, as you can see. This object is striped. The stripes are curved. They follow the contours of the spherical surface of the object. So, um, and for more details on that, where I showed that this is actually a system of brown and black dwarfs, and that brown dwarfs are actually old or energy depleted stars. You may look at Article 317 entitled Planet X System, Brown and Black Dwarfs with High Magnetic Field. The name stellar core comes from the fact that the objects lose gravitational influence as they age, and as a result share their outer layers of material until the core of the object is exposed. This occurs because an object's gravitational influence or its ability to interact gravitationally comes from the photon energy within its particles. During its lifetime, this energy is transformed into free light photons which the star gives off, and it will therefore lose gravitational influence as it ages. This also leads to the object expanding and losing its outer layers of material, as its ability to attract its own matter decreases with decreased energy. And you may look at Article 210 entitled Stellar Core Gravity, Tidal, and G is Not Constant, and Article 272 entitled Noctilucent Clouds and Planet X Debris in the Earth's Atmosphere for more details. The material these objects shed becomes debris in the sun's corona and in a solar system. This debris is also low in energy and thus has, at least initially, no ability to interact gravitationally but it is able to absorb energy and will thus affect any planet it gets to. And here we see um, a photograph. Uh, it was photographed through a telescope by Scott Sioni. And uh, as you can see, it seemed to be striped. And, and that was through, through a telescope. In May of 2017, as you can see, the object is striped. It looks like a brown dwarf because of the stripes. But it turns out that this it's not made out of gaseous material at all. It's just a thin layer of softer but still solid material clinging to the core of the actual object. 
And you can see that it, a few weeks later, the object had shed most of this material, and that's what it looked like. So this is what stellar cores do in the sun's corona. They come in with already uh, most of the outer layers having been lost, but still with some material on them. That's why they have these stripes on them. And then they lose even that, and then they regain some atmosphere from the sun. Uh, they absorb coronal plasma from the sun, so they regain. The object is also blue because it's emitting a light from the core itself. And it seems to do this once uh, it has started absorbing some energy from the sun. Now here we see another one. This one is still dark in this wavelength, uh, 171 angstroms, not emitting light in that wavelength yet. There's another one, clearly another object there, that has started emitting light because this one has most likely been here long and has absorbed uh, a coronal plasma from the sun. So it's acquired an atmosphere by taking that plasma from the sun. It's now emitting light from it. This object is most likely a newer arrival, and it hasn't had time to absorb much material from the sun, so it hasn't started emitting light from its newly acquired uh, material. So we are not dealing with a single planet or brown dwarf. The objects are part of a huge system of dead stars or brown and black dwarfs and planets. There may be or there may have been a 10 to 30 or well, we may actually have 10 to 30, at least I think so, from the many sized objects that I have seen. And these are the largest ones. There may be even more, but perhaps about 30 of them in the system, which uh, would have once been living star, at least of the system that has already arrived. We don't know if there are more still coming in. Now, each of these stars would once have had a planetary system with planets and moons. All these planets and moons would now be dead as well, and therefore would now be small-sized stellar cores. If each star had some 100 planets and moons before it died, we would end up with more than a thousand small stellar cores, which were once living planets and moons. These small stellar cores would now have shared their outer layers of material until the core of the once living celestial object was exposed. Even though they are small, they would act in the exact same way as the larger stellar cores, which absorb coronal plasma from the sun once they arrive in the sun's corona and eventually begin to emit light from the newly acquired solar atmosphere. The objects once in the sun's corona, though, become energy bound to the sun. They are not able to generate their own energy and so absorb it from the sun. They are ejected away from the sun from time to time when the sun is provoked into a CME by the presence of the objects and the energy drawing process, but they will keep coming back and the process repeats itself. And here we see another one of these objects, one of the larger ones. This one's about the same size as the sun. So this is a stellar core or uh, a brown or a black dwarf. And it was seen, was observed moving away from the sun with the coronal plasma that had come off a CME event. So these objects are um, usually observed within this CME. Uh, plasma because they actually provoke the sun into having CMEs and therefore they are then ejected by these CME events. However, they, they come back later on. And the reason why they keep coming back is because telecores are positively charged. They are like super ions. They have lost their negative layer of electrons because the gravitational field, the energy within the object, is not strong enough to maintain a, an outer layer of negative electrons. So that means that the object is now positively charged and it's attracted to the sun's negative layer of electrons. So even though it is ejected, it will keep coming back because it keeps on being attracted to the sun. Now these objects never fully regain their layer of electrons because once they absorb some electrons from the sun, these electrons are absorbed into the core itself. The object 
does not have the strength to maintain its electrons separated from the core. So, and for more details on that, you may look at Article 193 entitled Stellar Cores in the Sun's Corona. Why do they not collide with the Sun? Now, the term Nibiru usually refers to a planet which is mentioned in very old historical records. Nibiru means planet of the crossing and is supposed to appear either every 3,600 years or at a time when things are about to change dramatically on Earth. The object is supposed to create a cataclysmic event which changes things on Earth, after which time there is either an opportunity to start again or there is a golden age. One thing we should realize about the historical record, though, is that it is easily manipulated. There are, in fact, many signs that the recorded history we have of life on this planet is full of lies and deception. It is therefore likely that the myths regarding Nibiru are not correct. The object uh, the objects that are found in the solar system are extremely numerous. It is not just one or two objects. It is a whole huge system. These objects are dead celestial objects and are absorbing energy from the sun, as I mentioned above. They are dependent on the sun and are attracted to it. The sun is not likely to have enough energy to power this whole system indefinitely. Eventually, the sun will run out of energy and go dark. It may even have done this already. Eventually the sun will come, will become as low in energy as these dead stars and will thus become a stellar course as well. You may look at article 244 entitled The Planet X System, Destroyer of Star Systems for more details. The stellar cores are not just absorbing energy from the sun, though. They are absorbing it from planets as well. The stellar cores are periodically ejected by the sun and reaching the planets, at which time they interact with the planets and absorb energy from them before returning to the sun. In addition, the stellar cores share their outer layers of material, which then spreads throughout the solar system. This debris is entering the atmosphere of the planets, and because it is so low in energy, it causes energy to be drawn from the core of the planets, which then hits the top layers of the atmosphere, including the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. These objects are not ever leaving the solar system unless they have absorbed all the energy there is to absorb or unless the creator of the universe removes them. This means that this system could not have been here 3,600 years ago because if it had, there would be no solar system left now. Therefore, this system of objects is not the Dembiro of the historical record. However, we seem to have reached an end point of our current civilization because this system will eventually destroy the sun and all the planets in the solar system. In fact, it is likely that the planets have already moved further away from the sun because as the sun loses energy, it will not be able to draw the planets in towards itself as strongly as before. You may look at article 250 entitled Planet X causing Earth to move away from the sun. If this is what is meant by the crossing, the end of civilization, then it is clear that the Planet X system is what is leading to that end. And therefore, we could say that this is the system of the crossing. And then uh, we may even call it the Nibiru system. The signs that the Earth is experiencing changes are there, such as the fissuring of the surface, ever-increasing volcanic activity, and tidal effects such as ocean recession events and freak waves, uh, which also show uh, that the Earth is being affected. These effects are likely to increase in severity in the coming years, and if the sun gets to the point that it is no longer um, that it no longer attracts a stellar cores back towards it, and one of these objects becomes permanently attached to the Earth, it is likely that the effects on the Earth will increase in severity extremely quickly with huge earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the breaking up of the surface occurring at such a pace that the result would be cataclysmic. 
and here are some of the effects of the earth expanding in size due to the fact that it's losing energy basically its surface is breaking up and this is why there are fissures occurring all over the planet in conclusion the planet x system of stellar cores is found in the sun's corona this system could not have been here before if it as if it had, there would not be a solar system left now. So this system is not the planet of the crossing, nor the planet the bureau that most people think of when they think of the term. The system is destructive and will result in a slowly developing cataclysmic event for the whole solar system. There is no recovery unless God, the creator of the universe, intervenes. This event started in 1850 as in, and is in progress right now. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.